and you got the wolves behind you. So you know, cool. I'm I'm in my kids' room. It's the only Damn. place like only place I get internet. I have like levied all kinds of wild threats that I'm not gonna follow through on to keep them controlled downstairs. It's a very delicate balance, my man. Damn, that's cool. Your kids are in the wolves. <laughs> One of them is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's funny. I've recorded my kids' room too, so I understand. Oh yeah, you are hey. both in your kids' rooms right now. <laughs> yep, it's the best place. Know. Pat's him also in the kids' room. You call your you calling your wife a, a kid, Pat? Is that what you're doing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know whose room I'm in right now. My room is <laughs> just, yeah. I'm in a Wells Fargo right now. Uh, it's where I record every Saturday. I find a local Wells Fargo. They give me a room only for a thousand dollars per hour. Should I try? Hey, I, listen, you give me give me five hundred. You can come record with me. Shit, Damn, I'm down to. I'm down to 250, so. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, we can keep we can keep going. Thank you for joining us, Jim Bryan, our guest today on Property Bonix. Uh, comedian. What's up? Lover. Uh, an owner. Church of Satire. One of the coolest comedy clubs that I've had uh, the pleasure of performing at. Very cool place. How are you doing, Jim? Thank you. Thank you. I'm doing pretty good, man. All things considered. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that you got the wolves behind you. You got the the spirits behind you. You got Kirk and Allen next to you in your ears. Just yeah, man. I got my spirit. My, that's my spirit animal back there. You see, it's grizzly bear. My spirit. Animal. <laughs> Damn. Are you uh, this? Uh, we're gonna chop it up and talk about some real serious issues. But I just had a curiosity. Like, if you were like in the woods by yourself, would you be more worried about the bear or a pack of wolves? Um, probably the wolves. Really? There's just more of them. Like, if if I'm if I'm gonna have to fight something that's probably gonna get me, I'd prefer it be one that perhaps I can outsmart and outrun. But uh, yeah. you come at me with a bunch of wolves. I mean, I'm like dead really fast. I don't I don't have too much. I don't have too much uh too much of a chance. Yeah. They, they say oh. if, you're in the, if you're in the woods with your friend and the bear chasing y'all, they say to get away, you gotta just trip your friend. That's what you do. If there's yeah, wolves, well, though, I, yeah, they'll they'll get you. They'll come get you and the friend if it's wolves. <laughs> yeah, heck yeah, dude. I remember we went uh, just years ago. My kids were a little bit younger, but we went to um, to northern, like California, like uh, Lake Arrowhead area, right? And we were up in this. Uh, we went up this big old mountain. We were all hiking in this trail and stuff. And they had like signs. It was like, look out for bears and mountain lions and shit. Mm-hmm. so we're walking along i'm telling the kids i'm like listen we have just got to be faster than the other families on this trip <laughs> right <laughs> like that's all we have to do like, that's it. and and you and you don't you don't want to like teach your children to like step over somebody but like there's a very simple survival sort of reality that if it's going to eat you be one person ahead of it <laughs> right? And, you, and you'll be okay. You know, and we did, we all survived. It was good. It was a good trip. The other family though, not such a good trip. <laughs> this is know. trauma for the other family. I don't know. I can't report on their experience. <laughs> Think about like, see, I, uh, I'm part of me wants to pick wolves because I don't think they can climb trees. And while there are maybe like several wolves, your boy could climb. So if I can find like yeah. a nice tree to full climb, I can perform I for the wolves while they're on the ground. I'll, I'll be fine. I mean, I I am also fairly fair. Well, maybe not at this age, but um, I had three points of contact pretty much covered. I could climb pretty much everything. But I also know that like sometimes when you're scared, like shit don't work the way that it usually works when you're hanging out with your friends. So uh, you go try and climb that tree, you can't get up that tree. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think you're in trouble, right? <laughs> Plus, that, that also is like, you better hope there's good trees to climb. Like, what if there's trees you can't climb? Then you're like, and you're totally fucked. So, you get killed by the wolves and the lanternflies that have decayed all of the trees. 
I try to climb up a branch or just breaks the walls are watching. Yeah, what is he doing? Why is he, why is he? Yeah. Yeah. I'm taking, I'm taking the bear. I'm going for it. I don't know. Plus I feel like you could maybe reason with a bear mm. a little bit. Um, whereas, <laughs> you know, I hear that. Like, like man, I, I got $50 for you. If you don't eat me, you got $50. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, f- I feel like, I feel like maybe you could like, if you had some food in your pocket, you could maybe make eye contact with it and be like, huh? You know, because like, I don't know, man, there's, there's a lot of literature that supports very, very understanding bears. And mm. uh, Winnie the Pooh. That's what yeah, right? dude. That's a... yeah. And, and then plus on the other end of it, you, I feel like, man, I feel like I'm unpacking this bear thing way more than I oh, should. But we um, don't have a lot of bear you know, talk like if, on here, so we'll take it. Yeah, I guess not. Right. Like whoever talks about bears anyway. Right. Uh, <laughs> If you got like a big long spear, I've seen this in multiple movies where if you were like, all right, man, it's fucking, I'm done, dude, but I got this big ass spear and I'm gonna let gravity do all the work. I've seen that in a couple movies too. So, shots of reverent. Yeah, yeah, man, like you got some hope even when you're on your back in your last breath. But like, dude, if you got like a wolves, wolves, plural, yeah, yeah. One, one, dude, one's on your neck, one's on your under, dude, you're toast, dude, you don't stand a chance. And you're, I don't know, man. I feel like it takes longer for them to eat you. You can actually like, watch them eating you. Oh, wow, Pat, awful. if you could, uh, you could put in a clip of a wolf uh, mauling a family. Put that in right now. If you could mm. put that in. <laughs> We're back. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, Jim. Something I always found interesting with you. You know, uh, we're going to discuss some of your background in comedy, church satire, but ultimately your background. You have is it psychology? Well, my professional background has been in the humanities profession. Like I started work at a, it was an orphanage um, on Long Island like back in the late nineties. So I worked there and then I went to Vegas after that. And, you know, I worked in a therapeutic group home in North Las Vegas that was like, you know, full of uh, young men who had strayed from the social order of things i suppose but um you know yeah but but they you know they'd managed to you know be identified as people as young men who 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 had some sickness in their mind right like this it wasn't all right by a matter of uh you know poorly developed brains and undernourished brains uh both both you know in reality and, and and even figuratively so they were able to like sort of skip around the, the legal system a little bit uh, if they were placed in this therapeutic group home. So I was like, a, you know, I was like a lead staff at that place. And I did that for another five years. And when I moved to PA, I worked at a treatment center for adolescents uh, with psychiatric disorder, a big place with a lot of kids, man. And it was, it was pretty hairy there. Um, did that for another five years. So like that's 15 years in the books, man, of yeah. taking care of uh, adolescent uh, mental health. And then, after that, I went and I did like another five and a half years. But I did it with uh, senior citizens in um, end of life, like retirement homes and stuff, uh, Alzheimer's disease. So, I mean, you know, I probably was a stand-up comedian for, you know, half of that time. But there was a point where, like, I had too many kids and too many bills. And, you know, I just wasn't bringing in any money doing stand-up. So I had to walk away from it. Like, it was, it was taking me away. I felt really bad. Like we had like three little kids in diapers. I'm like, all right, peace. I'm going down to Baltimore for an open mic. I'll be back right. in four and a half hours. <clears throat> like you, that's just not how I. I just couldn't roll like that, so I just stopped yeah. um, until you know later on, uh, like 2015, whatever. I I got back into it. Mm. So is uh, what did you did you get a did you get like a lot of material from working in places like that, or you just left that alone and talked about your like your personal life? Anybody seen Jim? Jim's like two minutes into the answer, right? <laughs> well, we said we may have lost him. It's okay. Jim will be back. Jim's going to be back, baby. Jim's going to be back with multiple wolves on his wall. <laughs> oh, there we go. We got him. We got him. What's up? Yeah, man? dude. I don't know. I just lost I, I just lost you guys for a minute. So sorry about That's that. That's part of the episode. We just do that. Sometimes we disconnect our guests mid-question. We spice it up. <laughs> yeah, how was uh, what so, was my what was my facial expression like when I froze? It was this. Oh no! It was shit. literally that. Was it? it was literally that. Oh, that's awesome! You know, what I mean? like when you when you pause something on Netflix, go take a piss, and somebody's always like, Ugh, you know, it's always funny. 
That's that just what Jim, Jim does that. When he doesn't want to answer the question. He just freezes. On time. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yo, the Zoom link, it's disconnecting, bro. What's that? <laughs> um and no we don't want to uh obviously don't break hip or anything like that we don't want to tie too much into your uh professional life and all that or your past professional life um but i'm curious the 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 not not necessarily the transition into comedy um and now we'll go back to your question in a second my bad um not necessarily transition to comedy but kind of to alan's point what are some of the like similarities with that, like working with a, a demographic, whether they're elder or like kind of like in the a juvenile uh, sense as like someone that's in a humanitarian uh, standpoint versus doing comedy for a bunch of bozos. Are, are there any relation? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that they're <laughs> probably closer aligned than you, than you maybe think. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I guess like, I really didn't, I don't act any different now than I did when I was like the chief person in charge of a 250 bed retirement community. Like I really don't, I'm really not that much different. Um, I'm a little bit more liberal in, in, in my use of uh, profane language in my, in my new profession, which, oh. which is, which is great. You know, like as a comedian, I say whatever the fuck I want, like, what are you, what are you going to do? Right. You know, but you know, if I was I thinking from a heckler in, standpoint, in like, what I would do. I was like, what would I do if someone yo, was cursing I, me up the left and right? <laughs> yeah, this deal you know, that happened to me. I don't get heckled a whole lot, right? And like, you know, anybody that's seen me do stand up, like, I don't really talk about anything that's really all that. Like, someone's going to be like, wait a fucking minute, this guy, you know, like, there, there's really nothing like that in my, in my comedy. But uh, I was doing an outdoor show. I don't know. It's like a month ago. The good show is closing it. It's fun. Anyway, I'm like I'm telling a joke about like my observations about how animals respond in the middle of the street. Right? It's a fun joke, dude. I tell it all the time. It's a fucking fun joke. It's about roadkill. Whatever. Dude, this guy in the front row, he was like, "Fuck this guy." Right? So he like sta- He stands up and he's like, "You motherfucker!" He's screaming at me, dude over this joke and um i don't know the crowd kind of turned on him a little bit right and i was like hold on everybody H- hold on this guy's got an opinion he needs to share it right now right let's <laughs> let him have let's let him. so i like flipped it back on him and then he like had to explain himself he was too <laughs> drunk to explain himself and like the crowd like jeered this guy and he just got up and left it was hilarious it was oh, so funny damn that's what what kind of animal were you talking about <laughs> um, dude it's a lot about a lot of animals i think it was about a squirrel i got to the i got to the part about the squirrel because the whole the whole uh, crux of the joke is the indecisive squirrel right like the squirrel can't make up his fucking mind when he's crossing the street right he always like stops in the middle it's a funny joke dude and right. he was like nope nope not funny anymore dude, he came at me. it was crazy it was crazy it was so crazy I'd always uh, go ahead, Alan. I said, um, you you mentioned that you don't get heckled a lot, and I think it's a testament to like like your uh, your material and how, how how well you do comedy. As I I don't know, I feel I feel like people that always get heckled, they're doing something wrong. You know what I'm saying? Really? That's that's my like, I I feel like that because yeah, yeah. I don't feel like I get heckled that much either. But like I, when I do get heckled, I I definitely can tell you where I went wrong. You know what I'm saying? So like, I just except like, when you went right. It's never like you tell like a banger and then someone wants to like one up you. No, 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 I don't play that shit. No, I, I let it be known. Like I don't, I don't play that shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't get right back at the audience member. I don't care who it is. But I think that when you're telling like solid jokes and there's no room for people to talk, you're not going to get heckled as much as somebody that's just like fumbling and hesitant. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's a testament yeah. to your ability. Yeah, I, you know? I. I well, thank you, man. And and I do know I do know what you what you're talking about, man. Like the way if if I'm if I'm telling a joke, um, even if it seems like I'm just barking at the moon, like I've thought this through. Right. And like for me to get heckled, it's almost like it would be like, would you heckle somebody playing a song? Like when they was like they got finished with their their song, their lyrics, or during their song, would you be like, oh, I don't fucking like this song? No, man, like people shut up and they listen to the song right. when they're given the impression that that's what this is, right? Like, I'm just, 
I'm just singing the song, but I, I don't have a singing voice, so I just do it like this, you know? Yeah. Um, but man, that guy, he was so, he was so mad. But the funny thing about it was that like, in my professional career prior to comedy, yo, I dealt with some very sick and violent people. And sometimes it didn't end very well. Like I got, I got injuries and scars and stories to tell, you know? So like when this happened, like I went into, into gear a little bit to where I was like, all right, this is about to go south, but I was out of practice, you know? Cause I, that shit used to happen when I was in like my prime as a healthcare worker for like, Dude, I, I, I would walk through the place like I was wearing a Jedi robe, man, like microwaves and shit would be thrown around. Like I was just really, really good at it. But when this happened, I, I was like, how do I react? I was like, 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 I felt this like surge of adrenaline to where, you know, I was like, all right, how am I going to handle this? Like, am I, you know, I think am I going to go at him aggressively? No, I, well, I, it speaks to like it's your background too. And just like having that, like, you know, the humanitarian there. I imagine. I can envision that helping with hecklers. Cause I think a lot of times the go-to is like, shut the heckler down, uh, berate them or whatever. Whereas like when you have a little bit of like a empathy or you've worked with a lot of people, you're a little bit more, for, you could speak to this per, perhaps more like you're a bit more forgiving of things that may be perceived as bad behavior. So like you saying, you gave the room back to that person to explain themselves. That doesn't surprise me. That makes sense. All right, it does. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Uh, I'm glad that you that you vibe or not. I think I think it is. I think it's kind of like a mindset where, like, I, I don't know. First of all, it gives you an opportunity if things are going well. If you want to like look at it from like a comedy actionable advice, I suppose. Um, if things are going well and that happens, it's like, well, I could probably sort of gear into some crowd work and you know spice things up. You know, like sometimes you don't get the show is just the show and nothing really happens in the crowd that offers an opportunity to maybe elevate the whole night. So like if things are going well and that happens and you already own the room, it's like, dude, you got an army of people with you right now. Right. Like, you could really turn this into something to where it could make it even more memorable than just like a regular comedy show. And that's what happened. And it wasn't like, you know, I just took advantage of an opportunity that was presented to me, but, but, um, you know, I you know the guy that ran the show was like they were talking about it at the next show. The, mm -hmm. um, there were people who had come and like people remembered it when he brought it up. Like the crowd was part of something there, uh, and it was cool, you know. So it does, if you're willing to engage it and take the risk, I suppose, um, by giving some opportunity. I wouldn't generally suggest like, oh, if you're getting heckled, just ask the guy what he thinks about you. <laughs> you know, it's like pretty, it's pretty clear what he thinks about you. Um, like, but uh, I don't you. know. I was just, I was just feeling, I would, yeah, like I was, I was just feeling a wave, dude, and I just wrote it, and it was fun, dude. It was really fun. I had a good time. I'm glad it went the way it did. Uh, I wouldn't have thought. And then on the ride home, I was like, man, I should have tore that guy out. You know, like I was disappointed <laughs> with myself for being humane. I was like, I'm such a pussy. I should have tore that guy up, you know. Uh, no, but I'm glad, right I'm glad it went the way it did. Um, we talk about like comics missing the stage. No one talks about the hecklers. Hecklers have not been able to heckle since March. You ever tried heckling through a Zoom show? It's the worse. So, yeah, no. I, oh, wait, it's, wait, wait, yeah. We're gonna have to deal with these people. They're they're gonna they're, they're gonna come out in full force. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There's Facebook groups. Um, you know that I mean, Facebook everyone... groups just for hecklers. They organize, then they disperse uh, members to different comedy shows. And the whole point is, I'm bullshitting. This isn't true. Oh, I That's thought you were serious. <laughs> I thought you were serious. I realized I was like, oh, I think I'm so, selling yo, this way so too did, seriously. My bad. So, so did I. <laughs> yeah but think think about that you think about how easy it was for you to just sell to to two I don't, me and alan aren't total dummies here <laughs> the two of us were like yep society is just fucked enough for that to be a real thing <laughs> made sense right? i'm about to start the group like, back. Our, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yo, jesus yo you might want to like you might want to edit this portion because you you may have unknowingly created like perhaps the biggest obstacle to all of our careers. <laughs> oh Son man, we're gonna bitch. make it a promo. Uh, we're gonna make my it a bio. Promo. You know, no, yeah, you're gonna see it in uh, the, the promo. Dude, page whatever. I, honestly, I'm ready. 
they could come at me, whatever, yeah. dude. I'll just kill them with kindness, man. Just like the last guy I thought he was going to get somewhere with me, right? Damn. Said, um, said, I'm ready. Jim, I one thing, I so Kurt, you, you did say Jim is the, the owner and operator of Church of Satire Comedy Club. And, you, and when you said, I'm ready, it made me remember the time you gave me a chance, man. You gave me my first headlining weekend at a comedy club ever, yo. Yeah, and yeah dude. Very nice. I, you was funny, man. I knew yeah. it. Mm-hmm. I, I I appreciate that, man. I didn't think I was ready, but I I, I was ready and I, I did it. I had a good time, man. And um, so I wanted, I think it's a good time to like, just talk about like owning a comedy club in times like this, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I know it's very difficult, you know, you haven't had any any shows and things like, uh, how, how are you holding up, you know? Uh, by a thread, I think overall, it's tough, man. Um, I will say regarding your headlining weekend, honestly, man, n- no one's really ready to to headline like a weekend until it's already happened. Right. Y- you know, what I mean, the first time, yeah. first times, first times, what it is. Uh, I don't know, dude. I'd seen you a gang of times, man. You was funny every time. I don't think I saw the same material out of you. And I, I could add. I was like, man, it's close to 35, 40 minutes right there. I mean, it was pretty simple. Um, just a, it's a pity that we that we, you know, that we don't necessarily we we got to be so thankful for our chance when we get it because we feel like if it didn't come, we were never gonna get it. Like it sucks that that even has to be the way that we feel about it. But like it is what it is. But anyway, with that being said, I just want to make sure. Like I was real upfront, man. I was totally confident booking you. Um, Appreciate it. So, yeah, dude, for sure. You too, Kurt. You guys are both funny as shit. Anyway, um, yeah, so, I mean, like, financially at the club, like, it was, you know, it was tough, man. Um, Seen a lot of clubs around the country were, like, closing down, um, which, like, that just makes me really nervous, you know, because it's like, man, I mean, I know I've hung on, but if some of these places are closing, like who, how in the world am I going to manage, you know, like yeah. I'm nobody dude, this club, you know, uh, but you know, at the same time, it's like, well, it's, I'm also nobody like there's, I don't have any staff per se, you know, um, we all yeah. made money when we made money. Like that's, right. that's just how it worked. It's almost like the circus, so to speak. Like w- when, when a comedian made money on a show, that person was making money, just like the rest of us for this particular show. Like we were just feast, or, we were just one weekend at a time. So like, I didn't have to lay anybody off, which was great. Um, paying the bills has been really, really difficult, but we just like, we're just figuring it out. You know, uh, my wife and I have, you know, we've got her shop, she's making a couple bucks doing that. I got some bit work uh, teaching uh, classes on zoom uh that's paying some bills i got some you know some private consulting here and there um you know with like leadership development like it's all oh, bit nice. work dude like it's all it's gig work same as going and running it's it's just i just take whatever comes you know I'm, i mean uh try and make as much as i possibly can for it without like burning bridges you right. know like you, you know like um and just whatever, just figuring it out, you know, using any assistance money that I've received from the state or from the county, like really, really, really closely uh, to try and like extend uh, as far into 2020 as possible, 2021. Like that's my, yeah. I, I don't le- legitimately, I do not know when or if the club will open next year. Right. I, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I'm at the mercy of other people, man. I don't make yeah. enough money to be like, you know what, book, and I'm open, and I'll pay the fine. Uh, no, I won't, dude. One <laughs> fine, one fine, and I'm done. Like, right. I'm done forever, mm. right? And and I'm not willing to, like, risk my house or anything like that. Like, I've been real meticulous about starting this when I quit my, my career. Like, I was not going to, like, be like, all right, family, let's hop in a raft and let's fuck everything right. up, yeah. you know, like. I've just, that's just not the road that I chose to take. So like this house, I need to stay in this house. I need to be smart about this shit. Uh, so I've decided I'd rather make no money in the club rather than lose money in the club. That's and every, insane. everything I do truthfully, you know, is to pay for this place here with the kids. Uh, 
and um, with the family and keep the lights on in the club. Uh, so far we did it, dude. Like it's December, man. It's been nine months since I had a, sh- yeah, a yeah. show in here. Like, I mean, that's crazy that we're still here. And we, we lucked out with them shows in the summer. That's right. Um, you did some outdoor shows, correct? Yeah, we did a bunch, man. Like we nice. did them in June, July and August, almost every single Friday and Saturday night. And like we that paid the bills dude like plain and simple there's no way i bet those outdoor shows we only charge 10 bucks a ticket um i was able to put money in comedians pockets at almost the same rate that i did from the club um and you know like there was a few weekends where we made good we did good man it was stressful it was a ton of work uh but uh it paid for shit September, October, and into November, right. you know? Yeah. Uh, so that was fucking great, dude. So anyway, so now, like, I'm feeling pretty positive about 2021. I'm um, feeling like I'm feeling good. I think we're, I think we're going to be there. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of places that closed, um, like, that's, that sucks, and I really do feel for them, but – like whatever, you know, if I'm still standing, I'm still standing. And perhaps perhaps that will allow us to maybe grow a little bit um, by making a decision to stay closed. I know like when I, you say I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was no, okay. when you when you when you say the idea of like um you're not willing to like risk the the safety of the staff and for the uh, the guests that come through by staying open. Um, it's, it's bittersweet, but it's almost a kind of relief to hear. Uh, Cause I think a lot of people that are in your position right now, uh, w- some of them maybe you know, on the struggling side of it and kind of go on the other end of going to keep it open, whether it's for political beliefs or just from sheer having to survive a uh, sort of thing. A lot of people feel like they're forced to do that. Um, so it's a bit of relief and I say it bittersweetly, uh, that you're on the side of, hey, I have this club, great club. Um, and for those that haven't seen, it's a very unique setting. It's like you're in a church um, and you're deciding, hey, you know what? I'm going to remain closed for this. What would you say is one of the main driving forces as to why you decided to stay closed versus kind of, is it the fines or where, where's your head at on that? Well, no, it wasn't so much the fines per se. Um, like if I had a, if I had a a space that was like a 500 seater, Mm -hmm. I would have to kind of apply how much that would cost. Right. Right. And I would not be able to afford that at all. Um, if I could have social distanced people, socially distanced people, whatever inside a, a large venue. I think I would have opened at one point or another right. um, because like, you know, that's what I was seeing. I, I kind of modeled what I was doing because I, I, I wasn't going to, this was, this was a time I, I've always been kind of cool with like jumping out of the gate first, right? Like, like uh, handing out on the mic on a weekend for the first time or, you know, putting a club in a small town, like taking the road show and buying an actual, you know, uh, buying into a business or some shit, you know what I mean? Uh, like, but this was the time where I was like, I'm not jumping out front. Um, I'm going to hang, I'm going to hang back and I'm going to see how some of these businesses sort of interventions into this are received by what was, and still is a very fucking polarizing issue to where there's not a whole lot of in the middle here. Like people People are going to respond to it. So I waited it out to see how other places did it. Um, but when I got down to it, I was like, dude, I can't socially distance in here. Like in, in having a show inside the club, even if I ran at the occupancy guidelines, you guys have been in there, 25 people in there at one point, because it was 50% at one point. Now it's like fucking, you can't have more than 10 people. So it's kind of pointless. Yeah. Um, but like even at my most, I still couldn't socially distance, and I was just like, like I got my 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 family lives in New York. I got friends up in the Pacific Northwest. Like these people are like 
these people, they have no reason to feed me anything other than reality. And one reality is horrendous and the other reality is horrendous. Right. And, and it's like, if I put people in there, I just, I can't, I can't justify, uh, this is not listening to both scientific research, which is the crowning achievement of humanity, and two people who I know and trust who are like, this is a fucking burning fire. Like, it is, yeah. you, you know, so you just, you pick, you pick a line of thinking and, and you stick to it and you just hope for the best, right? And I like that. Pick a line of thinking. I like that. That's where I'm at. Like I picked a line of thinking. I'm not sh- like, I, I, like honestly, if somebody were to come in here right now and be like, "Yo, it's, it's, it's official. It's all a hoax," um, I would be like, I feel marginally duped, but <laughs> it's just a little bit, just a little, bit. you know. But but if 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 I erred on the side of promoting human welfare i'm wi- i'm willing i'm willing to be wrong yeah for that um your line of thinking is with the the safety of the people and your family um and in general man but I, I just i don't know dude you just that's just what i do it's all about promoting human welfare yeah that's it that's so i've never heard anyone actually say that it's all there's about promoting so, human welfare. There's so, so much shit that you can do. So much benign, simple action that a person can do that can be in the in the service of promoting human welfare. It is so fucking easy. It is not a big ask. Um, but uh, for whatever reason, um, we, we don't, you know, collectively, I don't know that maybe there's enough people that think that way. Um, but it is, it is what it is. Whatever. Yeah, just an interesting question of like, because the, the idea of a collective people, like when people say the people, and there's always kind of like that trope that people as a group are bad, but individuals aren't really that bad. But when you kind of get them all together, that's when you get you know some trouble. Um, with your experience, do, do you find that to to be true, or do you think just like we're society as a whole is just like this complicated system that you know doesn't really have good or bad? It's just misunderstanding of each other. Um. Well, I do believe that there are bad actors. Um, you know, um, I think that it's inevitable. But, but I, I also think that like, it starts at, at at very, very small points. Like, it starts with individuals, and and I, I think that the majority of people uh, are good. Uh, I, I do. I, I'd like to. I'd like to think that. Now, when I say that, I think I'm only really working with like between 51 and 60 percent majority. Like when I say most of the people are good, I am no longer confident saying that eight out of 10 people are good at all. Um, now, I, w- I would put that number much closer to like somewhere between five and six and a half, right? And and I, you know, and maybe, maybe I'm being unrealistic, but, you know, I haven't seen a whole, whole lot of awesomeness uh, sort of reflected, right? And it's not just online and shit like that. Like there's fucking, even in small towns, like where I'm at, dude, there's shit written on sidewalks. There's fucking, there's like, you know, it, it's hectic, right? It's hectic. Yeah. So like, I'm no longer convinced, but what I think people don't recognize, and I've seen this to be true in community settings of more than 300 people, um, that, uh, uh, there is a staggering amount of good that can come from people like working towards something that is like forward. Yeah. Um, I, I think that we spend, you know, it's true that like, you know, people when they're together, they can cause, they can cause mad trouble. Like that's a fact. But I, I think that in saying that we, we neglect that, there is a balance to that and and there's a ton of good that can come from positive communities um and that's a that's a mindset Mm. Uh, but it starts it starts at a really singular point and then you run in then you run into what happens when there's a layer of complexity that's sort of laid on top of that almost like a blanket um that now we're starting to like we're using things like 
uh, where they gerrymander and and then there's all kinds of you know ideologies among leadership that are you know then it, it gets to a point where like it's pretty complicated shit you know um, I don't know that I'm smart enough to comment on that stuff but I, I feel like I am well but I think I'm smart enough to comment on the stuff that I can attach to which is like in community of 300 or less right which i have been in charge of and i've dealt with um, a whole spread of religious diversity and racial diversity and sexuality and ages and generations right like every one of these communities the staffing populations were very very complex and dynamic and i know what we were able to accomplish in those communities right and that's a small sample size but like it is what it is, dude. Like it's, see an it. it's experience that I had with interpersonal behavior among a huge spectrum of individual experiences, right? Like that, that fucking matters. That can't yeah. be ignored. Um, yeah, so, I think a lot know, of times the cynicism takes over and people do forget that other end of the spectrum of the collective people that, you know, whether it's doing nonprofits or fundraisers or just having just one small goal of like a family that wants to boost the self-esteem of the youngest sibling, um, things like that. When it's like one goal, I think a lot of times people can be good. And it's good and nice to hear a refresher on that from someone of your background as well. Um, I am curious, Alan, do you think people as a whole are good? Yes, or bad? easily. I think okay. people as a whole are good. I'm gonna tell you why. Because when you're born, you, I think you're born good. I think, oh then, yeah. I think I think society makes you bad. So I don't think I don't think that uh yeah no I don't think nobody's born like yeah I'm about to fuck shit up. No, I think like I think I've seen some bad kids, bro. <laughs> I've seen some bad kids. I know bad newborns. You know what I'm saying like, but I think that you know I think people are half was it nature and nurture. So you 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 have mm. genes and you have what you see in the world. You know what I'm saying? So mm. I think. So I think that people are born good and then the world turns them bad for whatever reason. You know what I mean? So like, like, like for instance, we like the, the president that's about to lead the office, he turned a lot of people bad. You know what I'm saying? Like there was, there's been like a lot of, like a lot of hate, you know, that, that's been going on because, because of him, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think that, that people are influenced by the environment, you know what I'm saying? So I think that, yeah, I think everybody's, I think everybody's born good. That's me. Like you ever see a picture yeah. of like a, uh, it's like a viral picture. It's like a, a little black baby and a little white baby. They're like hugging. You know what I'm saying? They're like, <laughs> they don't see color until they're taught it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. <laughs> we need some more adult versions of that. We need some adult <laughs> black men and adult white men just hug. And then it'd be like, oh, look. I don't know if that would mean racism is done or we're about to I'm, shoot a very, I'm, very, I'm very trying, sexy I'm, film. I'm trying to hug. I'm trying virtual. to hug you both. Oh, yeah. Giving you virtual oh, thanks, hugs. Man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> dude, we'll, we'll be that. If, I mean, you get, yeah, we, if we move it around here, we have like a little bit of a Zoom Oreo thing going on. <laughs> 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 That's it. <laughs> nope. That's what, yo, you know, we're talking about all the, these, this, this prosper and uh, thriving in humanity. You know, it, it reminds me of uh, these things that we like to do on the show. Um, let's get in some goals. Um, I'll set things off. Uh, my goal, what is my goal? I think I wrote it down. Oh, yeah, clean my car. My goal for this episode is clean my car. You know your boy just paid off the car and all that stuff. I'm not hey. trying to brag. You know, I'm not trying to brag hey. and all that stuff. You know the boy's <laughs> trying to brag a little bit. Um, you, you know, back in my car, though, it's a mess. I got books all over the place. I have like a, I think a battery for some device that I do not know what the device is. I just don't clean back the car. I don't have guests in the back of the car. So I'm going to make note by I don't know, August of next year. I'm going to have my <laughs> car clean. Have it clean. It's too cold to be doing it right now. But like, you know, long-term plan, I'm going to clean the car, accumulate some more trash in there so I have more to clean. That's gonna be nice. You're gonna see a boy with a clean car next time you see him. Yo, that's a good goal for you, man. Because I remember Thanks, one one time we was going to record at Pat's house, and I got in your car. I never forget it. In the back seat, I was like, "Yeah, you need to clean this shit." You remember that? Why are you calling me out like that, bro? <laughs> no, I don't you remember brought that. It up. I do not you remember brought it that. up. <laughs> I do not remember that. I remember, was it when Lemire was with us? Yeah, Lemire was uh, with us. <laughs> <laughs> one of you brought yep. like a open beer bottle. <laughs> I remember because you okay. So one of you had an open beer bottle. I think you were in the front. And I was like, that's illegal. We can't 
we can't have it. You can't have an open beer container in the front of the car. And then I think that's when you switched over and saw my dirty back. Uh, yeah. So yeah. All right. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I, I got, still don't I was, clean it since then. I was like, I'll get in the back with the beer. I'm pretty sure that's legal. <laughs> <laughs> we still yeah. don't know. We still don't know. Alan, what kind of goal you got going on? I got a, I got I got a good goal, man. Um, the other day I was on Facebook and I seen a comedian friend of mine. He did a before and after picture, right? And the before is the regular picture with him with his shirt off, right? Shout out to Jesse Blanco. <laughs> it wasn't Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think he'd take his shirt off online. Uh, <laughs> but so the, he had a before and he had an after picture. And the after picture was like a month later. And his, and his, and his caption was, I did 300 push-ups every day for oh. a month. And he was like, you can tell, he was like solid. Like before he was like a little flabby, but like after that month, he was like solid. You know what I'm saying? Damn, he so looked I, like a kangaroo. Right? You know what I'm saying? So I was like, hold on. I want to do that. I want to do 300 pushups a day for at least for a month. I was 300. Like, so, all right. It's, I'm curious to see this because I've, I imagine if you do, because there has to be a rest point with pushups, right? Like if you're working the upper body, there has to be rest days. Otherwise, you're going to, like, I don't know if it's overextend is the right word. No, it wouldn't be. But, like, don't you have to, like, have, like, off days? I got the answers. I got – I've tried it, right? So, Very I was, nice. like, I, the first day, I was, like, ooh, I'm doing 300 push-ups a day. And I got to, like, 17. I was, like, oh. <laughs> 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 so, I was, like, I was like, yo, I'm going to take, take a chill pill. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to rest for a couple hours. Then I'll do, like, 17 more. I got the I got the like four. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, there's no way I'm doing three hundred, yeah. yo. <laughs> All right, bro. Well, you gotta work on your upper body. That's mm-hmm. that's that's yeah. that's different. That's you're talking that's about something that niche. All right, yeah, that's that's a good goal then. Try Don't break, shame me for my goal. I'm not trying to shame you for your goal, but come on, man. <laughs> May break so, down to like a hundred a day. It, no, listen, I'm all right, fifty. Fifty. I I got all to right. like I got to like fifty five the other day. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna work my way up from 55. But 300, that shit ain't happening for me. Damn, man. Both of you have like <laughs> yeah, dad that's, strength that's too. Me. Both of you, I hear that's a thing. Once you become a father, you get a little bit of dad strength, where it may not show aesthetically on your body, but inside of you, it's well, there. I, I guess I, I need to have more kids then, because I'm still weak as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, yeah, uh, I don't know, man. I wouldn't recommend. They don't make you stronger. I, I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> There's there, no, not at all. But yeah, uh, yeah you so. got you got long arms too, man. That works against you for push-ups. You, yeah. you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because like you can't cheat on it because like your your elbows are so prominent because there's so much distance between that your wrist and that your shoulder. You know, it's like fucking. Hanging a right yeah. turn. So I'm yeah. yeah. prominent elbows. Yeah, yeah, it's dude. wild, man. Like no one ever talks about my elbows, Dan. Yeah, uh, well, because I, you, you, he, Alan's tall, man. Push-ups seem like they would be difficult for a taller person to me. Now you're kind of short, too? Damn. <laughs> yeah. Damn, Jim. <laughs> well, no, like, I'm on the shorter side, you know, and I got short arms. Like, I'm not that strong. I guarantee I'll do I'll do push-ups, no problem, man. Like they're fuck, I got a little time. My arms a little. It's like what? <laughs> no, yeah, I have, I have that. Uh, I have long arms, long legs, short torso, torso, torso. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. A, so it sounds like yeah, yeah. Push-ups do not sound like that. They're very favorable for you either. <laughs> I, I make things work. I make it work. It sounds, it sounds like you guys got a competition you can do. That's a, oh, that's a, that's a, prop, that's a, a proper competition. Proper competition. Oh man, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> there you <laughs> go, man. There you Tuska, go. Another Russian author. It's funny. Uh, Jim, what kind of goals you got set up, man? Right now, I got one goal, and it's to get this New Year New Year's Eve virtual show like done. Virtual Pat. show. Whoa, whoa, whoa. tell us about this virtual show. Uh, Pat, your boy Pat George is directing it. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be broadcast is on the club's Facebook page. It's going to be like a laugh-a-thon, right? Where it's going to be a clip show where I'm just like, I want comedians from like all over the country, all over the world, because I've worked with so many over the years now. Um, I, what I want to do is a free show, but I'm going to be accepting tips on it. And then everything that I make, I'm going to put towards 2021 operating expenses to try and lock in the full year so that. I'm ready for anything and the club can be, the club can be secure. 
like that would set me at ease because this is you know this is like my family legacy man like i want my kids to be able to work at this place one day if they want to like it's important to me in a lot of ways and to my family so i want to i want to lock this club in so that no matter what happens in 2021 we're good um i have no idea if that's gonna happen like whatever i'm gonna have a cool ass show but that's my number one goal yeah my number one goal at this point is to just try and get the vibe the message out there to get some clips so that i can have this show that's i want to be on there at a time got clips i want to be i want to i want parts hell yeah man send send it in send it in kirk send it in like just keep them short you know like three minutes or less tops Mm. um but even if you know like a musician or something like if you know a musician who's got like a dope song that maybe it's like two three minutes long whatever send it in like it'll be fun i'm just gonna host it i'm gonna put like a, i'm gonna put a i'm gonna put a fire like a one of them portable fireplaces on the stage right. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna sit there Ooh. next to a fireplace get warm thinking about that very nice Hell yeah, right. dude. <laughs> where do so if people want to like if artists are listening to this right now and they want to submit to this how can they where should they submit these okay all right if you want to submit you're gonna send it to c-o-s-n-y-e 2020 right so c-o-s n-y-e 2020 at gmail um dot com so that's it's oh it's this email address that's like it's got nothing in it except for these submissions so uh, you know i want it to be i really want to get as many as, as i can um so like i said we'll see we'll see what happens i got a couple really funny ones so far man a couple animated shorts that were pretty uh, cool uh yeah so i'm pretty excited man it's, uh, hopefully i get a bunch and then i'll just host it and bring up the clips whatever and we'll see what happens man and when is it when is it airing on new year's eve new year's eve okay yeah, cool on new cool, year's cool. eve so, definitely take note of that that's gonna be dope yeah it's gonna be fun man and pat knows what he's doing which is very yes. helpful because i don't producer that's pat that's what we call him man he, he it makes shit happen. <laughs> people people yeah. reach out to me like in terms of podcasting stuff like, hey, so how do you do these things? And every time I'm just like, I do not know. <laughs> like I, I literally just open the computer. That's it. Yeah. That's all I yeah. open the computer. Yeah. I, 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 have, I, I want your experience with it then. Uh, I don't, I don't even want to learn. Like, dude, I've been running the club. I've been running the club for how many years now, dude? I, apart from plugging in a cable into a microphone, dude, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I have no idea. I have no idea. And it's, it, it is strictly out of a willful ignorance to knowing how it works. Yeah. Ab- absolutely. I've just been like, nope, I don't care to know how that works. I like it to be a little bit majestic if you catch my drift, you know? <laughs> yeah, I've heard, no, I've heard, so uh, Rap, rap, I was listening to an interview with rapper Too Short. And he said the same thing about like making beats. Like he love he loves to rap and he loves to make beats, but he doesn't want to technically learn how to make beats because it's going to take away from the rap he got he has to do. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like the same thing. Like I don't want I gotta learn that. It's going to take away from this. You know what I'm saying? So, Man, dude, you- I don't want to know that shit. How does that help me? How does that help me tell a joke about a horse dick? Uh, no one <laughs> would, would you know? Like it just doesn't help me. It's just, I'm not interested in it. You know? When you thankfully, hear the, like. Oh, no, I was gonna, like, we were speaking of it too short, like when you hear like a Dr. Dre beat, like a really good Dr. Dre beat, how good are the Dr. Dre lyrics to go with that? There has to be a balance. There has to be a little bit of balance. Exactly. Yeah. Dr. Dre lyrics are trash. Oh, man. Yeah, well, and, and I got people, I got people who know what they're doing. So the product doesn't suffer. You know, <laughs> uh, everybody's got to know their own strengths. Damn. There was, um, you know, speaking of hip hop and all stuff, I, I think uh, Jim, I don't know if you saw our buddy Allen. Made it onto World Star Hip Hop, um, to World Star Hip Hop previously, um, and there. In terms of the World Star family, I heard there was some bad news in the World Star family. The uh, Alan, oh, what, yeah. what happened? Oh Alan? yeah, there was a there was an Instagram an Instagram model um, named Joycelyn Cano. She actually died from getting another Brazilian butt lift in Colombia. And, and she was, was like, known in World Star too. Listen, like she was listen bro. I never heard of her right, but I went to her Instagram page. She had 13 million followers. She already had a nice but it was it was so crazy and yeah. it, it, it was crazy like they're going crazy with the um i got a whole joke about big butts you know what i'm yeah. saying like and I, it's just crazy and i had a, my question that i had for you jim if if you had to get like plastic surgery what what would you, what would you get if you had to get one thing wow <laughs> i've never i've never thought about that um 
Like if there's one, one of, thing you could you could change in your body. One of my eyes is like fucking smaller than the other, you know? And every time I see a picture of myself, I'm like, son of a bitch. It's almost like fucking somebody stepped on my fucking head when I was brand new. It's just like slightly smaller. And it always kind of got at me. So I guess if I was going to get plastic surgery, I'd be like, dude, can you just fucking make a photocopy of my other eye and like put it on there? Like, I guess that would be it. I'm good with my ass and stuff. I'm all right. Yeah. <laughs> Some confidence right there. That's why you yeah, own dude. a club. When you own a club, you got a nice butt. <laughs> yeah, or you believe you do. Who cares? <laughs> oh, Damn. man. But yeah, rest, rest in peace to that young lady. But that, that I, I just like, I like to know what people, like, there was like, what? I just like to know, you know, one thing. Because okay. you can be confident as you want to be. But there's one thing you're like, man, what the fuck is wrong with this? Like, why does this nipple? Yeah. You get? What about you, bro? What, what's yours? I would, uh, it would either I would like decrease the size of, of my nipples. I wish I could like. What you love your so, nipples? No, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm confident and I love them, but they've been like a burden all my life, man. It looks like I have, it looks like I have bigger boobs than I do. It's just so it's just weird. It's hard to explain. I don't want to show them on, online right now. My girlfriend gets mad. I show people my titties, <laughs> but like, it, I would probably probably that or 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 one more thing, my pinky toe. I got like that weird nail. It's not like a whole nail. Ugh. It look like the like a it look like a pen yeah. like it's just a it's weird. <laughs> yeah, that's why isn't that the that. thing you want to yeah, change? Yeah, you don't even first. need that though. Like you could just go and cut that fucking thing Chop off yourself, all. dude. You can put like yeah. a rubber band around it until it loses circulation, and then yo, it falls they off. did that. They did that to uh, one of my. We had our goats fucking neutered one time, right? And uh, the way that they did it was they just they come out and they just put this tight ass rubber band like right at the base of their sack. And then it was like, you know, and then they just run around. They run around with their nuts in that thing, right? Until until their nutsack just fucking falls off, right? So anyway, my kids is that we're out there like playing in the pasture and shit. And one of them's like, hey, daddy, what's this, right? He's got, he picked up a fucking scrotum that had like, it had dried in the sun. And when he shook it, it, it had fucking like a maraca rattle to it. <laughs> That's a true story, dude. Oh my god. That's, that's a true story. That's he's like, what? he's like, what's this? He's like, cha 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 cha. And I'm like, get out of here, man. That's a nutsack. That's amazing. <laughs> he's doing an ancient ritual without even realizing it. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, that, um, was, that was amazing. That was amazing. I for, forgot for, all about that. For those who don't know, Jim has a farm as well. For context on that one, Jim has a farm. That's, yeah, dude. I got all so... kinds of I got all kinds of wacky shit going on in my life. I'm Damn. not even a farmer, dude. I grew up in Long Island in Vegas. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on anymore. Oh, it's like we're in Pennsylvania, bring the animals in. Yeah, um, I've totally lost control of my life. <laughs> That's so good. The wolves will take uh, care of you. The rubber band thing is a real, they do it to humans too. I actually had that on my pinky. Both my dad and I, we were born with like extra fingers. He has 12. Uh, or had 12 and then oh, i have this 11 that one. yeah that little stump right there used to be an extra finger and they just put a rubber band around it how uh, big was it it wasn't very big i don't think i never saw photos for whatever reason my mom wasn't like i gotta document this uh, but like yeah when I, it was like when i was like an infant they just like and it well, came off so better a fi- it yeah better a finger than like you know like a nose or something I know. Shit, you, know? <laughs> um, yeah, you ever hear about them you ever hear about them tumors man they got them tumors that they pull them out and them tumors got fucking teeth growing out of them yes full, full grown what? molars and yeah. stuff hell yeah dude hell yeah are you serious um, no yeah for real thing. yeah a lot of times I don't hair know will be in them yeah. too. like it's like almost like another human was in the process of being formed like a cell yeah. mutated into the tumor Ugh, that's crazy yeah there's there, yeah. It's, it's almost like there's like remnant uh, flex of DNA that attach to living tissue and only create that one part of the code on this tumor. So like it, it's weird, you know, like it, it it's um, the way there's like zygotic or something. I'm trying to think of the term, uh, but like, because Zygotes. they have, the, yeah, like because they have the, the, the genetic code that is specific to maybe like teeth, then that's what grows off of this tumor as opposed to like the genetic code that that calculates into hair growth, which might be a slight variation. So like hair growth, dude, it's crazy, dude. Crazy. You gotta I know we're going to Google after this. We're going to Google that photos sounds, of that. That That's sounds why. like what's, what's going to be happening to everybody that takes the vaccine. It's going to have teeth and hair growing <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Rhino horns, dude. <laughs> I have a jaw in my armpit. Uh, so, 
Yo, you guys, uh, yeah, did, did you guys see? Did you guys see Pence get his vaccine? Did you guys watch we that? We did. We did. We did see that. Yeah, that was. Uh, I was surprised. I was surprised. I did not because I knew before they were talking about. Um, I think Clinton, Obama, and Bush. They were like, "Hey, we'll do it live," but we haven't really heard anything from the Trump administration in terms of like. We haven't heard a lot of pro-vaccine talk, so to see Mike Pence do it, I was a little surprised by that. It was weird. I don't know. Yeah. It's so it weird. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know. I don't know what other people think of it. To be honest with you, I, I haven't really read as much. I think it's very hip- hypocritical of him to be one of the first in line to get the vaccine. Something that he called a hoax. It's just like, bro, you don't. Is, is the vaccine a hoax too, bro? It's just crazy. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Just, yeah. I, so I guess I, he, he hasn't explained himself or anything. I don't know. Like I haven't I haven't read anything about. No. It. He, I mean, he's always kind of like kept it low key. So that's I don't I don't know. Did he say it was a hoax? Because I know Trump was all about saying it was a hoax, but there was a, a few different things where Pence kind of uh, distanced himself from Trump. And I think, if I recall right, that may have been one of them. I don't think Pence ever flat out said it was a hoax. So maybe that's like a Well, you in- know, he might be guilty by association of a great deal yeah. of things because of his, his, just because of his, like he's, a, if I'm not correct, he's an evangelical Christian which they've been very vocal about what they believe this presidency means um, on like a world and biblical s- scale. And he, if I'm not correct, you know, that's where he lies, you know, religious speaking. So he may have not said it's a hoax, but I'm pretty sure his religion feels it's a hoax. That's what those big mega churches are part of where those super rich pastors oh, yeah. are like, it's a hoax, it's a hoax. Like, I mean, if you don't openly come out and condemn what your people are saying, then you don't have to say a goddamn thing. We know exactly what you're saying. Okay. Um, so that's where my position on him. I just thought it was weird as on TV. It was like, yeah. you know, like, what is this supposed to be accomplishing? Like, I, It seems, it seems almost point? like. I don't get it. Because I also saw like Trump and Melania, they did, they did like a, a photo shoot for like a holiday photo shoot, which they, I don't think they've done before. It seems like they're doing, the administration as a whole <laughs> is doing like, I don't want to say good, but like they're turning a leaf towards the end and i'm curious what the motive is oh like it's, it's easy. easy the mo the motive the motive is they're going to be running again in four years so they want to make it look like okay they want to clean up all this shit so everybody can remember the last month and be like remember that christmas card remember that uh, vaccine yeah. they took listen they, they they set this all up to run again it's not no coincidence they didn't, they didn't just change and become good people and no they set this shit up for four more years they, they, they're trying to come back in 2024 watch you see damn we will see well, and in 2024, we're gonna have Jim on, and then we're gonna play this part back, and we're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, and we'll be saying the same thing, right, all over again. I'll <laughs> be like, I picked the bear this time, damn it! I was chased <laughs> by wolves last week, and yeah, oh, no. yeah, oh. yeah, dude. If this happens, if this happens again. I will be convinced that we are living inside of some kids choose your own adventure novel. Uh, this this can't happen again. Like we we got to come out the other side of this. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I just I we're, just in a, we're, well, we're in a. I want to go do some, do some gigs. Yeah, right. that would be nice. But instead, we're living in goosebumps. Uh, so we're doing that so, um, <laughs> yeah. Be- yeah. Be- Before we dip out or anything like that, uh, one of the other things we love to do. Um, I feel like we've given some recommendations and such, um, but they haven't really been proper. Let's give some prop suggestions. Prop suggestions. My my prop suggestion, this one, um, some of you actually, both of you as dads actually may be able to relate to me on this one. I, re- I recommend... Uh, going into your closet and just hanging out there sometimes <laughs> whether it's like you got a crawl space closet or just like a large closet big closet small closet a lot of times people don't really hang on their closets um i find that my closet in my room right over there it is so peaceful so peaceful dark quiet no one else is there i think people should try it out that's a good suggestion man i Thanks, I, man. I think that uh I think I, I think I want to piggyback my suggestion right off of yours because of what you said. I, I can relate to that. I'm a father. Um, I, I suggest that everybody go go to the uh, Alan Massenberg YouTube page and you can see I have a song on there called "Hiding from My Kids," 
right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a the whole video. Yeah. It's about me hiding from my kids in the bathroom. See, mm-hmm. I I do that. <laughs> I they they know it too. I tell them that's the only time I get peace and quiet. <laughs> Is when I'm in the bathroom, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so space is alone in the home. Yeah, man. It's a good feeling. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree with you on that, man. It's like the one good thing about having a gastrointestinal problem is that uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have it's a like GI now, doctor's note. I got to yeah. be away from these kids <clears throat> for at least three hours right now. Yeah, seriously. It's like, yeah, I'm taking this shit, man. What you want me to tell you? I'm a sick man. Fuck out of here. <laughs> 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 you gotta get a you gotta get a note from the doctor like you're missing school you're missing you're missing yeah. parenting that's okay my, i got a note from my doctor like i missing parenting yeah. Yeah. That's wild. uh jim do you have any uh, suggestions nah. See, I, I, I got know. jim suggestion this is jim's suggestion you go to you you email your content and you watch the new year's eve thing. yeah yeah Thanks there going. you go there you go. good stuff suggestion. oh yeah you should also check out my my, my comedy on amazon prime you should uh, also check out my comedy on uh, all the audio streaming stuff. Like I am in fact a comedian that sometimes I get, I get a little pissy. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, I work, I work kind of hard as a comedian and the club like overshadows me most of the time, which is not, a, I guess, I guess I, it's not a terrible thing to have to worry about, I suppose, but that's it. I suggest you watch my comedy. I don't even care. Get self-promotion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. You're a great comic as well. First time I saw you was as a comedian uh, before uh, recognizing, oh, that's the same person that runs Church Satire. So just off your comedy alone, I was able to see that. Off that grill show in York, actually, um, I think all three of us were on, and you killed it. Uh, so, I love that place. That place is yeah. so much fun. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. And you smashed every, it, too. Every time I, every time I go there, yeah. I have a good time. That, that was that right was on, my- dude. That was one of the topics that that uh, we wanted to talk about too, though. Is like being a, a club owner versus a comedian. You know what I mean? Like it's like you said, you get put it's in hard. a club owner club owner box. You know, it's is hard though. I mean, it's hard for more reasons than just that too, though. Yeah. Uh, because like I make decisions as the club owner sometimes that like maybe are a little bit more, a little bit more like uh, maybe not quite so mindful. Like I. I want to watch an entire video submission. I really would, but like as the club owner and the booker, like if I get a hundred of them dude like you know you better be fucking really funny in the beginning or like if somebody comes with a bunch of referrals and some tv credits and shit like i gotta sell tickets you know what i mean i know what people react to like that part sucks because as a comedian like i want to give all of the allens their shot to be hilarious because that's the way that this works dude like there's there's wonderfully beautiful funny people all over the place that aren't on I mean tv uh but that part sucks that's the hardest part for me between being a comedian and being a booker um and a club owner is that like it's two different mindsets it's almost like it should be done by two different people but i also think it's why people do like church of satire yeah. so what what would you say you know, just, it's, would... it's i'm still learn. i'm still learning no i imagine if, from what you've gathered so far as a booker what it advice or tips would you give not necessarily for people submitting to your it sounds like you have like a, a handful already but just to stand out for comedians that are trying to submit to bookers what's something if they don't have the credits that would make them stand out initially for me and it's a big for me right um like if somebody sends me a professionally put together sort of correspondence uh via email with you know some attention to detail in terms of like grammar and structure um and that email gives me access to some media of theirs that they're confident about and it also um gives me any promotional material that they use for themselves if I get that all in one email and then you know, a lot of clubs would be like, well, that's just a press kit. And to a degree it is, but the way that it's delivered, like kind of matters to me. Like if I get like an email where it's like, yo, what's up? I'm here to headline. Here's my press kit. And like, I, you know, I, I might, I might take a look at it and be like, I mean, it's okay, but it's exactly the same as the other person who was like greetings, you know, I'd like to offer, right. um, you know what I mean? Like there's just, 
that shit matters to me. Maybe it's because I came from like a, you know, like a management background or whatever. I, I can't say why, but like it matters, dude, as opposed to like me getting a text or, you know, a messenger with like shit ton of emojis and shit um, being like, yo, 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 and a headline, you know, and it's like, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> Jim gets like uh, you up texts with just like links to their videos. Two a.m. in the morning. Kissy face well, some, emojis. <laughs> some, sometimes, sometimes that actually happens, and you know, and 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 by that I mean like you just get like the hey, here's my link. I want a headline, or hey, what's up? You know, I'm looking for stage time. Here's my stuff, and it's like it's popping. Like that's you know, I don't know if I really does. Does anybody think that's how this works? You know, yeah. um, but some people do. You know, so like if if someone were asking me for advice on the matter, I would be like, give me the impression that you care about this enough to work on it when you're not being watched and like put your best foot forward i don't know like that matters you know what i mean and if you send me a video i'm gonna do my very best to watch it but be funny in the first like 60 seconds man don't make me wait like there's a lot of videos out there like express something in those first 60 to 90 seconds because it really that shit matters dude i've booked people hey like without a doubt i've booked people watching 30 seconds of their stand-up and they smashed chris allen was one of them um and then mike Leibovitz was another two guys that i shit you know i did not watch 45 seconds of either of their videos i gave them a whole weekend nice. <laughs> that's that's what the uh the, the book one of the bookers at uh broadway comedy club said to me he said 10 to 15 seconds funny period you need to be funny within 10 to 15 seconds like not yeah. even not even a minute and no 10 to 15 seconds we need to be laughing period yeah. like that's i'll give people a little bit more time because i am not new york city um <laughs> you know uh but he that that booker is probably he's probably getting five times as many submissions as i am mm -hmm. and his time becomes or her time becomes equally as valuable it has to be parceled out right dude like if i got 10 times more videos shit i might say the same thing all right Better so be funny. funny for comics I'll listening what, i think chris... oh go ahead i was gonna say i'm pretty sure it was chris allen i think it was within five seven seconds i was like son of a bitch you know <laughs> um <laughs> just so fast it was so fast i can't even remember like what the joke was or nothing but his name yeah. pops out his name pops out and then lebo was the other one incredible check both those people out if you people who are listening man chris allen and mike Leibovitz. holy shit funny yeah. dude, noted funny. noted interpersonal uh, communication skills they matter uh if you're submitting videos maybe wear like a clown nose or something make sure with the first 15 seconds you stand out um that's what i gather from that um jim yeah, we're, we're gonna be wrapping up uh thank you very, again for joining us this is cool uh we, yeah, alan man. and i we've been wanting to have you on for a while now so we're glad to finally get this in we appreciate it we really do man definitely oh wow, dude i appreciate it i was hoping to do this from the club but i mean we run out of time so long and short of it my wife was like no <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's all yeah. good, man. You got the wolves yeah. backing you up, so you got those in you, uh, and the bear, and the bear. Um, with that, uh, Alan, uh, do you have anything you want to plug or anything like that? Uh, no, just um, you know, email your stuff to C O S New N W E N N Y E N Y E twenty twenty at Gmail. Yeah, yeah definitely check that out on Thank New Year's you. Eve. Yeah, man. thanks guys. Yeah, tune in, man. Tune in. Don't feel pressured to tip, but still maybe tip. Love you guys. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Love you too, John. I'll, I'll be submitting. Take care, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Later. Appreciate it, Jim. Thanks, man. Peace. Bye.